Good morning, Raja Scholars and Champions, on Wednesday, September 9th. We'd like to begin this morning by wishing a great happy birthday to our friends Alexia Orozco, Anaira Osuna Martinez, Nancy Robles Perez, Christian Renteria Esquivel, and Diego Gomez. We hope you celebrate with your family today. And thank you for continuing to spread Raja pride and demonstrating positivity, respect, integrity, determination, and excellence. Now, I want you to pay close attention as we have a message from our counseling department today from Mrs. Miller. Hello, Raja. Counselor Miller here today on behalf of our wonderful Indio High School counseling team. In light of National Suicide Prevention Week, I'm here today to speak to you about depression and how it relates to suicide and health. I will point out what may be considered normal and what may need more attention. Because of our current times, my focus will be on how this pandemic may be causing us to feel at times, such as depressed life, and what we can do about it. I want to preface that the information I'm going to share is not intended for you to self-diagnose, but simply to bring awareness. But overall, if you feel you can relate to these symptoms too well, I want you to know that you are not alone. We are all going through this pandemic and have similar feelings, although in different environments. As always, you can email your counselor or talk to a trusted adult if you feel you may need to be referred. We are here to help you. So first I'd like to point out that feeling depressed and being diagnosed with depression are two different things. Feeling depressed can be normal. For example, living quarantine may have caused many of us to feel moments of sadness, fear, anxiety, stress, isolated or lonely. In fact, the coronavirus pandemic has created a historic wave of mental health concerns that involve, a, a, that involve depression and suicide, which is why it is so important to bring awareness and talk about it. On this slide, I have noted the differences between feeling depressed like and being clinically diagnosed with depression. On the left, we see feelings I mentioned in the previous slide. These feelings or symptoms may be caused by our environment or situation, such as loss, losing a loved one or a pet, or a breakup with a boyfriend or girlfriend. So the feeling is temporary. The mood is momentary. Whereas on the right, the person with a diagnosis of depression cannot just snap out of those depressed feelings. There is a loss of interest in activities that normally are enjoyable. It includes feelings of worthlessness, hopelessness, and helplessness, and feeling numb and for some suicidal, which is unhealthy and abnormal. With depression, there may be a chemical imbalance in the brain, so there is something that may not be functioning correctly. The good thing is that there is help. Talking to a medical doctor or therapist is key. So as mentioned, not all feelings that are depressed like in nature mean you have depression and need to be under medical care. What causes depression is the combination of several factors. In fact, there is research still being done to determine if it is genetic, environmental, or a chemical imbalance in the brain structure. So what can we do to help ease or minimize some of these symptoms? For starters, be your own defense against depression, especially during this pandemic. Try focusing on the positive each day, even when there are many negatives. In fact, let's take the concept of social distancing to physical distancing, because we need to stay socially connected, especially during these challenging times. Stay active. Did you know that physical activity helps with depression? Exercise is wonderful for blood circulation and helps with brain chemicals. And lastly, stay involved. Sometimes a small positive gesture goes a long way and makes you feel good to help or motivate someone. So again, we are all going through this pandemic together and we will get through this together. So reach out if you need to. Here are some resources you to consider. You can always email your counselor if you have questions, concerns. We are here for you, we miss you, we love you, and we hope to see you soon. Stay healthy, Raja. Thank you, Mrs. Miller and our counseling department. 
Don't forget, tonight, Wednesday night, Econ and Government. Students, you can pick up those books from 5 to 7 out on our front lane in front of the school. And our uh, Thursday is for our freshman seminar from 5 to 7. We want to make sure you come Thursday for freshman seminar. If you forgot to pick up a book, um, you can scan these QR codes. This page is in the Google Classroom, both of the Google Classrooms I set up, and it will give you instructions of when and where to pick up those missing books. And don't forget, as I shared yesterday, counselors are beginning to balance classes, and so we're going to see some schedules change. Double check your schedule in the morning to make sure that it's the same or if there's a change. We're trying to get all of our classes balanced in appropriate sizes. And seniors, remember to check your email from Mr. Gomez. There's still time to sign up for tonight, tomorrow, or Friday for those workshops to help you with your college essays. And our joke of the day, why was school easier for cave people? Because there was no history to study. Our final thought for the day, the best way to predict your future is create it. President Abraham Lincoln shared that quote long ago, and I agree with him. The best thing you can do is create that wonderful future. Do your schoolwork, learn your best, explore new options, and create that wonderful future. With that, be kind to one another and stay classy Indio, and we'll see you tomorrow on the Thursday broadcast.